Message transformation is an important aspect when it comes to integrations. Especially when the integration is between heterogeneous systems, we can't expect uh, the source and destinations to uh, systems to accept messages in the, in the same format. So this would need an integration layer like WSO2's Enterprise Integrator to perform the trans transmission of messages being exchanged between the source and target. So in today's video, I'm going to explain one of the message transmission capabilities offered by WSO2 and it's called Data Mapper. It is one of the easiest message transmission options available in WSO2. And it's uh, more of a UI based uh, transmission approach so that it's, it's pretty intuitive. So if you're watching my channel for the first time, please do subscribe and enable the bell icon so that my new videos will reach to you as a notification. Let's get into the video. Now, uh, to demonstrate, um, I don't have any slide, so I'm directly going and uh, creating a project. I'm creating a new Maven multimodule project by right-clicking uh, on the Project Explorer. And it's a Maven uh, multimodule project. I'm following the naming conventions that I've been following throughout uh, the series. So this is going to be sample 10 project and that's it. Click finish. Now under sample 10 project, I'm going to create an ESB config project. Sample 10 underscore ESB. That's the name of my project. Click next and then specify the parent as uh, the the Maven multimodal project that we just created. So it's going to be sample 10. Leave the remaining part as is and click on finish. See, if you expand sample 10, you can see an ESB project inside now. Now, uh, I would need a registry project as well. So click on new and click on other and type registry here so that, yeah, so registry resource project. Click on next and name it as sample 10 underscore reg. I'm just uh, following a convention of uh, my own. It's up to you, the name that you, uh, whatever is the name that you wish to give, you can. Click on next and then again, specify the parent and in the parent, mark it as sample 10 and leave the remaining part as is. Click on finish. So we have two important things, okay? So to, to work with the data mapper, we need the source and target XSDs. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to demonstrate an, uh, an example where we'll pass an XML, right? And then we'll transform it to uh, a format expected by the, the target and then we'll simply return. It's going to be pretty simple, right? So to start with, I need to have a request and response XSDs. If you have XSDs uh, ready, you can go with that. Otherwise, you can create the XSDs um, here itself. So I'm going to create it right here. Uh, so on the registry project, right click and click on new and then click on the registry resource. And uh, here we'll have multiple options to import uh, from the file system if you already have one. I don't have one, so I'm going to create from an existing template. Click on next and give it a name, the resource name. So I'm, I'm just giving a simple name, a request so that my XST will get generated with the name request.xst and here instead of endpoints, I'm going to name it as contracts. So this is where uh, your artifact will get registered in, in the registry, WSO2 registry. Okay. And uh, leave the registry part as, uh, as is, go. You, though you have two options here, go and con. Um, I'm going with go for the time being. And this is the most important part, template. In the template, I will go and pick XSD file. Okay, so I'm going to utilize a template provided by WSO2. Click on finish. Okay, now if you expand the registry, you will find a request.xst created here. But if you expand that, you won't find anything inside because it's just a template. Here I'm going to create an XSD, a simple XML that has some customer's information. Okay, let me create some types there. Uh, to, so to start with, I'm adding a complex type. I'm naming it as customer info. Okay, and then once I double click on the customer info, it will open up. And here I can add sub, I mean, child elements to it. So right click on customer info and add element. This will allow me to add more fields in there. 
so I'm going to give first name and then uh, add an element. So this is going to be a last name. And then uh, I would say date of birth and uh, I would say address. So this is what I'm getting in the request. So my request XSD will have these fields. Okay, save it. And then if you click on this uh, show schema in index view icon, we'll go back to the previous screen. Now you can uh, define an element here. So click right click under the elements, add element. Under the add element, give customer info. Customer info. Uh, let me make it as customer information. The data type of that element, it is string uh, for the time being. So when you rub, double click, you have an option to change the data type. So right click and set type. Okay. And then you can browse and then give the customer info, the one that we have created. Okay. So we are actually linking the element to the customer info type that we just created. Click on OK so that these elements will be the child elements of the customer information tag. Save the XSD and then come back. So you can see this is going to be a root element and you will have the child, uh, child tags. Uh, there will be four child tags and uh, they, they will be the ones that you created under customer info tag. So to see how your XML will look like, what you can do is right click on the XSD that you created and click on generate XML file. So this would generate an XML file. Uh, so this is going to be the parent folder where your XML will get generated. And this will be the name of the XML file. So that's request.xml. And here you have few options. So anyway, we have only one uh, operation inside this XST. So it's auto-selected. It's going to be customer information. And just leaving the remaining fields blank and click on finish. And this would give, this would generate an XML from the XST that you just created. And if you click on the source tab, you'll be able to view the XML. So customer information and under that there are four child tags, right? So similarly, I have to create a response XSD as well. Okay, I'm going to exactly follow, going to follow the same steps. Click on new uh, and the registry resource. Again, I'm going to use the template option here. Um, instead of request, I'm going to give the name as response. Here, this is going to be XSD, XSD file. Uh, this is going to be contract and click on finish. Okay, see I have the response XSD created here. Double click on the XSD. First, I'll create a complex type and let me give it as customer info itself. And here I'll make some changes. I'll just have a name field. So uh, this is going to be the name of the customer. Uh, but I'll concatenate uh, the first name and last name. I'll show you. And this is what uh, we are going to do in the transformation. And we'll have one field, uh, which is date of birth. Uh, I'll pass as is. And uh, we'll have one more, which is going to be, uh, in fact, I'll add two fields. So let's have address, address uh, one, address one, and address two. Save the XST, return to the previous window. Under the right element, right click, add element. Give name as uh, customer, simply customer, just to make bring some difference. Right click, sorry, uh, double click, and then right click on the customer tag, and then browse the complex type that you just created. So this is gonna be customer info, okay? Customer info, now our response XSD is also ready. If you want to view the XML, just as we did before, uh, right click, Select generate XML file and uh, it's going to, the, the name of the file is going to be response XML and it will be created under sample 10 underscore REG project. Click next, select the root element as customer and finish. So now this is going to be your response XML. Now that we have all the prerequisites ready, let's start with the actual implementation. I'm going to create an API under the Sampleton ESB project uh, to demonstrate how uh, we can use the data mapper. So I'm right clicking on the API uh, folder, click on new and rest API, create a new API, and then I'm going to name it as Sampleton API. And I'm giving a simple context and it's going to be Sampleton. Uh, click on finish. Now you have the structure of API ready. So in, in here, just to demonstrate uh, the data mapper, I'm not going to use any uh, you know, external 
uh, APIs or endpoints. So I'll have a data mapper, I'll perform the transmission and the response will be returned. So it's, it's going to be as simple as that. Okay, as a first step, I'm going to drag the data mapper here. Uh, yeah, so here's a data mapper uh, mediator. So once you place, once you drag and drop the data mapper into your API, double click on the data mapper so that it will open a new, uh, a new prompt, a data mapper configuration. So this would be another file that's, uh, that gets generated, okay? So I'm gonna give sample 10 data mapper config. That's the name I'm gonna give. And I'm supposed to save this in the sample 10 registry. Okay, that's it. Click on okay. This opens a new prompt. Yeah, see, as you can see, here we have both input and output uh, tabs, two sec separate sections. Now, once you click on, on the load input file, uh, you have multiple options to, uh, to select from the, the different resource types available. And since um, I'm going to demonstrate using the XSD, I'm, I'm selecting the resource type as XSD and I'm going to load it from the file system. So resource from file system and then select that from the file system. Okay. And that's the request XSD that I've just created. Click on OK. See, you can see the, uh, the input or the request XSD that you have created. It had four fields. Similarly, I'm going to load my output XSD as well. So click on uh, the load output file tab. Again, select XSD and uh, select the resource from uh, the file system. Click on the response XSD and open. See, now you have both uh, the request and response or rather the input and output XSDs, okay? Now the transformation or the mapping, it's gonna be as simple as just dragging uh, the input fields to the output fields, okay? So, but uh, in here, I'm going to do a slight uh, transformation. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, if you, uh, if you see on the, on the palette, now you have a different set of um, functions available, like common arithmetic, uh, conditional operators, Boolean type conversions and uh, string. So I'm going to perform a concat operation here. Okay. I'm going to concatenate the first and last name and map it to the name field. So I'm selecting the first name and uh, the last name, right? The first name and last name. And I can drag it uh, to the name field and the output. And again, uh, if you right click on the concat, there is an option called configure concat operation. So in case if you want to um, concat more fields, right? By default, you can see two input fields are there. But if you want to concat, let's say four or five fields, you can give as many number as you, as you wish. Similarly, and what should be the concat delimiter. So in this case, I'm going to give a space, right? So I'm just going to give a space. See, there are four input terminals created and the concat operation will use space as a delimiter, right? So I'm, I'm reverting the change and, and I'm reverting it to the number of inputs as uh, two because I have only two fields, but still I'm maintaining the concat delimiter as space. Now on date of birth, I'm not going to do any transformation. So I'm just going to drag and drop the date of birth here. And on the address field, uh, let me uh, let me perform a split operation. Okay, again, split has one input field and there are multiple outputs. If you click on the configure options, it, uh, you have an option to define the number of outputs uh, you need. In my case, I have two fields to map. If you see address one and address two, so I'm maintaining it as output. And I'm giving a split delimiter as hyphen, okay? Now, I'm mapping the address input field and I expect a hyphen to be there in the uh, in the address field, incoming address field. And if it's there, uh, the, split op uh, the split function will perform the split operation and the first part of my output, right, that will go into the address one and the second part will go into address two, okay? Save it and now the transformation part is complete. And the best thing is WSO2 has already provided an option and to verify your data mapper right here, right? So if I give a name, like let's say name one and name two, date of birth is gonna be 0101, let's say 2020 address, okay? See, if you try it out, you see the name is a concatenated field, name one space name two, it's concatenated, date of birth remains as is, and the address field got split into London and UK based on this hyphen. Right, so that's a delimiter that we mentioned. Now that shows the transformation as working perfectly. But just to show it in a completion, uh, I'm moving forward. 
So now this is our data map configuration and you can see the configuration files path where exactly it is saved. And this is the uh, input schema location and this is the response uh, schema location. Okay. Now, so once the transformation is performed, I'm just going to return uh, the response back to the requester. So I'm just adding a response mediator here and saving the project. So I'm done with the sample. I'm, I'm done with the API actually. So to deploy um, the API, I have to create a composite project application. To, to do that, I'm right-clicking on the Maven Multimodule project, uh, click New and Other, and then select the composite application project. Click on Next, name it as Sample 10 underscore car. And here we have to select uh, the dependencies. So that's going to be Sample 10 ESB project and Sample 10 registry project. Click on Next and specify uh, the parent from the workspace. Select sample 10 and leave the default. Finish. Now we have a composite application project created. Now to deploy it, I'm going to start my price integrator. It's already uh, running. You can see the start uh, status here. So to add a new composite application, right click on the EI broker and click on add and remove. Uh, click on the sample 10 copy that, that we just created, add and then finish. Now, if you look at the console, you can see the deployments going on. And uh, once you see the log entry saying successfully deployed the carbon application, that means your deployment was uh, successful. Now I'm switching to the admin console uh, to get the URL of my API. I'm in the admin console now. I'm clicking on the APIs. Uh, so these are the APIs uh, running. So I'm just searching for my latest uh, project, sample 10, just giving a star. That's my sample 10 project. Uh, this is my URL. Okay, so I'm going to invoke it from uh, Postman. So I have uh, Postman opened up here, but uh, I noticed I made a mistake while creating the API. Uh, since we have to pass an XML input, okay, uh, the, the method, the HTTP method for my API need to be changed because by default, uh, it will have only get but in this case, we need to have a post, right? I'm unchecking the get and then selecting the, the post method. Save it and then uh, click on um, the sample 10 car file and then say redeploy. Okay, so this was a, a slight change that I have to make to the API uh, before we actually test, test it. Uh, now I can see the message successfully deployed the carbon application. Uh, so now we are all uh, good to go with the testing. I've just pasted the URL here, sample 10. Uh, it's going to be a post method. Now I have to pass a body. So it's going to be an XML uh, body, right? I'll just select the XML from the one sample XML that I created. I'll select that from the registry project, a request XML. So this is going to be my request XML. Yes, so let me give my name. Okay, so my request XML is ready. Once you click on send, you will receive a response. If you look at the response, uh, the transformations have actually happened. Uh, see the first name and last name is concatenated into name. And there are no, uh, there's no change on the date of birth field, VOB. And the address is split into address one and address two, right? Uh, based on the delimiter hyphen. But uh, I noticed an anomaly here, the space that I actually uh, had configured as a delimiter when it comes to uh, performing concatenation, that's skipped now. For some reason, WSO2 has taken that out. Okay, so with that, I'm concluding this video here. I hope you got a, a basic understanding of uh, what data mapper is and what are the capabilities of it. And this can be uh, extended to perform even um, very complex uh, transformations. So in case if you have any queries, please feel free to write uh, to, back to me uh, through the comment section, or you can even directly write to me. Uh, to my email. Uh, I'll try to answer as much as possible to the best of my knowledge. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.